A hurricane or a typhoon, depending on the storm's location, is an overwhelming, powerful force of nature. These storms have unfortunately caused destruction all over the world. In 2016, it was reported that a Japanese engineer invented the world's first typhoon-powered wind turbine, an electricity generator designed to harness the energy packed inside tropical cyclone. Bro, the engineer said that his generators could power Japan for 50 years off of one typhoon, basically turning a deadly storm into a source of clean power that can be harnessed and controlled and therefore used to his maximum potential. This was also the goal of every man who's ever had the task of coaching Vontez Burfitt. What if we could harness this destructive energy and aim it in whatever direction we want? If any coach could have actually achieved this, we could be talking about a Hall of Fame player right now. Instead, Vontez Burfik's aggression went untamed and uncontrolled, and it often goes overboard in the worst possible situations. Vontez Burfik has lost over $5 million in fines and suspensions during his NFL career. He's an old school linebacker who seems completely out of place in today's league. Back in the day, Dick Buck is actually admitted to having a recurring dream where he hit a dude so hard his head flies off and rolls down the field. If Vontez played back then, dude would have fit right in. But in today's NFL, Vontez sticks out like a sore thumb. Many people would consider Vontez Burfik as the dirtiest player in the modern NFL. Regardless, today I want to take a look at Vontez Burfik's background and kind of take a look at his story from childhood all the way up into the suspension that he's currently serving. This is what happened to Vontez Burfik. Cue the way. Besides the fact that I'm a Bengals fan, this video was inspired by today's video sponsor, TheAthletic.com. The Athletic's the best place to read A1 content about football broken down into leagues, conferences, and even teams. They've got great writers like Bob McKinn who inspired this video with his article. In the article, he publishes transcripts of his interviews with NFL general managers, personnel directors, and scouts all about Vontez Burfik back in 2012 when he was entering the draft. So it's pretty dope, man. If you wanna check it out, The Athletic has A1 storytelling, a great place to get inside information on your favorite teams and players. Also, once you join, it's completely ad-free, no pop-ups and no interruptions. If you wanna join theathletic.com, all you gotta do is click my link in the description. That's gonna get you a seven-day free trial and 50% off your subscription. Let's get it. Vontez Burfik displayed his toughness probably for the first time when he was four years old. He was diagnosed with rotavirus, a disease found commonly in infants. Rotavirus causes inflammation of the stomach and intestines, and due to it, the four-month-old Vontez had to be hospitalized for over a month. When he was three, he got his hands on a lighter and literally burns down the house. At 13, he's riding in his mom's car, gets sideswiped by an 18-wheeler, flips off a cliff, falls two stories, okay? Fortunately, everybody in that situation survived. Surviving his neighborhood wouldn't be as simple though. Growing up in Corona, California, Vontez had to survive gangs, guns, and sirens, and he managed to escape those too. Vontez didn't play organized football until high school, but he started getting a reputation as a guy who played too rough while playing pickup ball as a kid. His uncles would have to pull him to the side constantly to keep the man from injuring his friends. In high school, Vontez was a phenom at linebacker, leading his team to a state title. As a senior, he was ranked second in the country by USA Today and was set to attend USC. Monty Kiffin, USC's defensive coordinator, described Burfick this way. He's unbelievable. He's big, fast, strong, has great talent. He's gonna be playing on Sundays. There isn't any doubt about that. Unfortunately, Vontez had already gained a reputation with USC quarterback Matt Barkley. See, they played against each other in high school and Barkley insisted that Vontez was a dirty player way back then. He said Burfick dove at his knees trying to injure him. And once again, while I'd love to tell Matt Barkley to just toughen up, bruh, it's Vontez we talking about. So I'm sure he did exactly what he's being accused of here. Vontez ultimately decided to go to Arizona State instead of USC. Maybe that has something to do with the whole Matt Barkley situation, maybe it didn't. Either way, Vontez was compared to one of the greatest linebackers of all time early on. 
Ray Lewis. But while Ray approached the game kind of like a Spartan warrior with the code of conduct, Vontez was more like the Dothraki, just charging in head first, pun intended. Vontez was a star from day one at Arizona State. In 2009, he won Pac-10 Freshman of the Year. In 2010, he won Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. So during those first two years, Vontez made a huge impression with NFL scouts and he was already rated at that point as a first round pick and one of the top linebackers in his class. The question is how, with one year left, did he go from a first round draft pick to completely undrafted? Let's talk about it. Vontez committed a reported 22 personal fouls in 37 games at Arizona State. Here's a few quotes from NFL scouts, courtesy of the article from Bob McKinn in The Athletic. He's gonna get in trouble because he can't sublimate his own selfish desires below the good of the team. Somebody's gonna take him based on talent, but I wouldn't touch this guy. He's a media creation. He stinks, cheap shot artist. Thinks he's tough, but he cheap shots people. He's an awful player. So as you can see, Vontez's reputation with the scouts, it fell quickly. And while the scouts sometimes have hilariously bad takes or insights, they were actually on point right here. A lot of times Vontez was more interested in trying to settle a one-on-one -on -one beef than actually playing linebacker. And that will create problems. So, Vontez Burfick was picked up by the Bengals as an undrafted free agent and immediately when we picked him up, my boy Tripp called me, right? Now Tripp is a Ravens fan and a linebacker, okay? He is the hardest judge of linebackers that, you know, I know. He was like, bro, y'all just got a cat that could potentially be the next Ray Lewis. You know, he got a lot of issues and you kind of got to keep his head on straight. He might actually do something stupid and get kicked out of the league, but y'all got him for cheap, so it doesn't matter. All I heard was the next Ray Lewis. That was it. So I was excited. I had no idea of the actual weight and the gravity of that caveat. Just like in college, Vontez's time with the Bengals started out great. He had over 100 tackles in each of his first two seasons, helping us to the playoffs in both years. In that second year, 2013, the man was a pro bowler. In 2014, the Bengals signed him to an extension, four years, $19 million with $7 million guaranteed. As we often see, after that contract, things went downhill immediately. That was the year the dirty player accusations gained ground once again. Vontez was injured for the majority of that season, only playing five games on the year. Still, within those five games, dude was fined by the NFL for intentionally trying to hit players and he was looking more and more like a head case out there. In 2015, he was fined a total of $69,000 for dirty hits. This was also the year that the Joker was potentially created. All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, if you haven't seen the video, in my What Happened to Antonio Brown video, I have a theory that everything goes downhill for Antonio Brown following the Vontez Burfitt hit. After that hit, AB's behavior gets more and more erratic. And I liken it to the Joker who says all it takes is one bad day to take the sanest man in the world to the most insane man in the world. It's kind of tongue in cheek, but there is some evidence to support it. So that hit knocked AB unconscious and possibly set him on a path that, you know, has led him on his interesting journey. And it also caused in part a 12 and four Bengals team to lose in the first round of the playoffs to our heated rivals. Quick recap of what happened. We're up, it's fourth quarter, all we need to do is run the clock out. Jeremy Hill fumbles the ball. Of course, the Steelers recover. Now at this point, Big Ben is injured. He hurt his arm, he can barely throw the ball 10 yards. So all he can do is throw like little screens and dump off pass. Vontez decides that this is the moment he wants to completely melt down. He charges in and hits AB, this hit right here that y'all can see completely knocks him out. So now instead of a 50 yard field goal, bam, that's a 15 yard penalty. Then Pac-Man Jones commits another personal foul. That's another 15 yards. That's 30 free yards. Steelers kick, chip shot field goal. Our playoff drought continues. Now again, it wasn't 100% Vontez's fault, but he was a huge catalyst for what happened. I'm not gonna lie, that loss still hunts me, bro. Vontez was never quite the same after that. We knew that he couldn't be reined in, his aggression couldn't be controlled, even in the most dire of situations. He would continue being injured, fined, and suspended 
for the rest of his time in Cincy. Now, some people thought that Vontez had turned over a new leaf during his time in Oakland. The reason was because when Antonio Brown was going on a complete tirade, Vontez was seen as the peacemaker. Even though, according to my theory, he kind of set that whole AB thing in motion anyway, but that's beside the point. Like I said, when Vontez was seen as the peacemaker, it did not surprise me one bit. And the reason is because Vontez is a good dude, man. You know? Go back through Vontez's entire track record. He does not have off the field issues. He grew up around gangs. He wasn't involved. He doesn't even have a video like this. All of Vontez's perfect issues stem from the fact that he's playing a brand of football that is no longer acceptable. But that is it. Off the field, this dude's been a model citizen. He takes care of his family. He kind of stays to himself. He does his thing. He goes to practice. He plays football. And then when he plays, that's when he actually gets into trouble. And if you really give it some thought, that don't mean you have to like it or condone it, but you can understand it. He's played the game like this his entire life. Playing the game like this, in his mind at least, completely changed his life. It saved his family. It got him out of the environment that he grew up in and it's made him a multi-millionaire. So to him, there is no Vontez Burfick, the linebacker, without that other part of him, those, those dirty hits. Those hits built his reputation in the first place and had other players fearing him. At this point, that uncontrolled aggression has become a part of his personality, that's his identity. So he's gotten to the point where he understands that nobody is perfect and he's just gonna take the good with the bad, his gift and his curse. Here's a little light example that might help illustrate this in a different way, right? For me, in my real life, I tend to overanalyze things, all right? I overanalyze everything. In my real life, this can be a bit annoying for my wife and my friends, but on my actual job, which is this, it helps a lot. You know, so regardless of how annoyed they might get is not something that I would ever want to change because it is part of my identity. It makes me me, you know, and it's helped in my mind to make me successful. That's not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but you know, that's what I got. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Vontez is currently serving a 12 game suspension without pay for a helmet to helmet hit on Jack Doyle in week four. Today's NFL focuses a lot more on safety and that's something that I am completely for, by the way. I do not condone the dirty hits by Vontez Burfitt. I'm just saying I can empathize with him, right? And kind of put myself in his position. He's an old school player and the game has evolved past him. His play style has completely been banned from the league, causing him a whole lot of frustration as he's pretty much ostracized at this point. The lesson that I take from it is you have to be able to adapt. Although it's too late for him to reach his full potential, if Vontez Burfick just wants to continue to have a career in the NFL, he's gonna have to adapt. Because right now, he's just seen as a relic of the past and quite possibly the dirtiest player of the present. My name is Flimlo Raps. I'm out of y'all next time, fellas. One.